Welcome back to Developers Home and today we are discussing Spark ETL with Cloud Data Lakes and in that we are doing this ETL with AWS S3 bucket. Till now we have done ETL with different data sources. Um, those are file formats, SQL databases, non-SQL databases and in last video we discussed about Azure Data Lake services and Azure Blob Storage. So now if you go to this Spark ETL uh, GitHub repo, you see that we are doing this all the ETL with different data sources we have done till AWS S3 bucket, but in going future, we'll be doing this ETL with different data sources. So you know that before doing that, what you can do is you can clone this GitHub repo. So you can also practice with me. And if in case you wanna create your Spark instance, you can follow this uh, data engineering tool suite where you know that we have deployed this uh, Spark instance, MySQL, Postgres SQL and MongoDB. With our Spark instance, we have external packages like Azure, AWS, GCP, Delta Lakes. Those are packages are already available. So you don't need to externally install those packages into your Spark instance. But if in case you wanna install these packages into your Spark instance, what you can do is you can go to this Maven repo and you can select AWS Java SDK and that will have this S3 bucket packages available. But in our case with our Spark instance, these are the all packages are available. So we don't need to externally specify or install these packages into our Spark instance. So now we are doing this ETL with AWS S3 bucket. So to do that, you might need S3 bucket, you need to create AWS account and you need to create S3 bucket, you need to load data. But if you want to learn this and you don't want to create AWS account, so yet what you can do is I am here providing few public AWS S3 bucket links. So which you know that you can use a freely which is available on public cloud on public S3 bucket, which is provided by AWS. So if you go here on AWS marketplace, so there are multiple data sets are available and those data sets like few of them are like 50 billion rows like huge amount of data which is in a like a parquet format csv format so if you wanna you know that deal with huge amount of data and you wanna do etl with aws s3 buckets you can go here and you can select your data sources i have done this uh, with uh, two different data sources one is with huge volume of data and one it with uh, less volume of data and we'll be doing today ETL with less volume of data because you know that it will not take time to execute. Uh, so today I am using this uh, multi token completion open data set. Uh, so what you can do is you can clone this repo and uh, you can upload those packages or those folder into Jupyter lab. So you can practice with me. So here you see I have two notebooks one is with different data sources and one is with uh, this data sources so before starting you know that etl with aws s3 bucket what you can do is you can also install aws cli so if in case you want to see that what kind of files and data is available into that aws s3 bucket you can also explore that so once you install aws s3 bucket what you can do is you can go to your command prompt and if you write this command aws s3 and ls it will list all the folders and files available into that particular folder and uh, i have selected this specific folder because i want to deal with small amount of data so that it will not take time to execute and i can showcase all the etl which we want to do today so if you copy this and if you go to this command prompt and if you just uh, paste this, it will uh, show that what all kind of data we have available into this AWS S3 file. So it will take some time because this is going to AWS S3 on public cloud and getting data from that to here. So here we see that this file is having like 500 KB of data and that's why I am selecting this one. But if you wanna explore with huge amount of data, there are different AWS S3 buckets are available there. So now uh, one more thing, which is, you know, that we are here using publicly available S3 buckets. And that's why we don't need to pass keys to connect dot 
uh, those AWS S3 buckets. But thing is, if you are connecting this S3 bucket, you need to specify this configuration because we are saying that we will be not passing key and still want to connect those publicly available S3 buckets. So when we starting this Spark session with Spark session, we need to pass this configuration. If you not pass this configuration, it will not work and you will be not able to get data from AWS S3 bucket. So as always, you know that we'll be doing this ATL reading data from AWS S3 bucket, we'll do transformation and then load data into our local warehouse and we'll load data into like CSV format and Parquet format. So now first I need to create a Spark session and my Spark session is currently running on port number 4040 and my Spark session is created and with that Spark session I have also specified that I am not gonna pass AWS S3 key and now at next step what we'll do is we'll say that I have this data available in CSV format so we have seen this that this is a file which is in a CSV format and that's why I am saying that a read format CSV which is also having header and after that I am just giving file path so normally when we are reading data from our file server we'll give path for file server if you want to read data from blob storage, we have seen that we need to pass WASBS and same way if you want to read data from S3 bucket, we need to pass S3A. So now I will execute this one. So basically uh, this is going to our S3 bucket parsing that 500 KB of data and so we have this now data available from AWS S3 bucket into our data frame. So next thing is we'll just explore this data. We'll see schema. So next thing is I'm just printing schema of this data and I see that okay this data is available into this format. I want to also visualize this data and that's why I am printing top 20 data. It will take some time but now we see that we have this data available into this format. So we have read this data from AWS S3 bucket. We have done sourcing part. Next thing is transformation. And for transformation, what we do is we create temporary view and table. So it will be easy to write Spark SQL. So next thing is I am creating temporary table. And again, I am printing schema, which should be exactly same like this one. And after that, we do transformation. And in a transformation, I am just saying that I need top thousand rows and want to store into one data frame. So here I am doing transformation it got this all the thousand rows into one, this data frame and last step is load so we want to load this data into our uh, data warehouse which is like our local data warehouse and we want to store this data into parquet format and csv format and that's why i am just executing this one so this will load data into the csv data one folder and in a CSV format same way next thing we'll be doing is be creating parquet data one folder and loading data into parquet format this is executed now I am executing from parquet now and meanwhile if you go here and CSV data one folder we see that this file created before a second so this is the file which we have just created and we see that we have this hundred rows uh, loaded into CSV format from AWS S3 bucket Same way we have executed for parquet So now if I go inside we see that this file is also created and now loaded we know that We can't view parquet files here. You need to download and you need to use parquet viewer To view this data or you can again read it from here and you can explore in spark but at the end you know that now we know how to read data from AWS S3 bucket how to connect AWS S3 bucket so now we understand how to do ETL with AWS S3 also if in case you want to write data it's again very simple spark dot write but I can't write into current AWS S3 bucket because which are the public S3 bucket and we only have already access and we don't have write access so if you want to practice with write you need to create your own S3 bucket and you need to use key to write and read data but now today we learn how to deal with aws s3 bucket from apache spark so yeah i think that's all for today and you know that if you want to practice with a different data set 
you can also use this one i have tried with this one and which is like uh, mobile data and phone data and which is like huge volume of data which is with data is available in parquet format so you can also execute this uh, jupyter notebook and you can learn how to read data from aws s3 bucket and you know that we already know that how to load data into these different destinations so instead of writing into Parquet or CSV, you can also write data into Postgres SQL or MySQL or in a MongoDB format. So yeah, that's all uh, for now. And uh, we'll see you in our next video. And in the next video, we'll be learning Spark ETL with Hive tables. So yeah, see you and thank you.